Hello, 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 Julie Surratt here for Dharma Talk Tuesday, because that's what today is, Tuesday, four o'clock Pacific every week. So here we are, and today's topic that we're diving into is how to let go of frustration using body wisdom. So I thought this would be a really good topic for this week, and the reason is because I've had a lot of people actually ask me the question, you know, like clients and friends, ask me the question of how, what do I do when I feel frustrated? You know, whether it's frustration with another person or frustration with some situation, something that's happening, or even frustration with yourself, right? Because we have those moments too where we say something or we do something and we're like, why did I just do that? Why did I just say that? And it's tempting sometimes to go into self beat up and to get really frustrated. And um, does that serve you? Maybe, maybe not. But what do you do in that situation? And so I wanna give you a practice, a very tangible, easy to follow practice today when it comes to dealing with the energy of frustration, especially when it comes to frustration that you experience towards other people, so that you can shift out of that and shift back into love, connection, um, abundance, prosperity, um, a feeling of understanding, because ultimately that's where we all want to hang out. Shamika, hello, great to see you. Thanks for saying hi. Hearts and likes as you are all joining. I'm so happy to see you here for Dharma Talk Tuesday. Okay, so there's three points here that I want to cover on the topic of letting go of frustration using body wisdom. So the first topic, the first uh, step on this practice is a simple word, a single word that is so much easier said than done. And that word is compassion. So when you're experiencing frustration with another person or a situation, the first place that you want to go when you're using this practice of letting go of frustration with using body wisdom is compassion. So what does that mean? Like we hear that word all the time, but what does it actually mean? Compassion is when you see that person or the situation that you're frustrated with and you look at them and you, you ask yourself the question of, or actually rather you say the statement, I learned this from Alison Armstrong, you say the statement, there must be a good reason for this. There must be a good reason for this. There must be a good reason for why they did that, for why they said that, for why they think that. There must be a good reason for this. Okay, so that's the first place you want to go. And the reason is because it takes you, it puts you into empathy. It takes you out of selfishness, self-centeredness, and it puts you into empathy by putting yourself in the shoes of that other person. Because here's the truth. You are not going to release yourself and free yourself of that frustration that you're experiencing as long as you're attached to your... Um, righteousness, quite honestly, your commitment to being right about your point of view. At some point, you need to look at what's happening in that other person's shoes and have compassion and empathy for that situation before you can clear the frustration energy from your body and heal that conversation, the relationship, and then move into cooperation or peace or whatever it is that you're wanting to move into in that situation. So the first step in uh, moving through frustration, releasing frustration, using body wisdom, is to ask yourself the question, or to, I keep saying that, to say the statement, there must be a good reason for why they did this, for why they said this, for why they, whatever this. So I'm gonna give you an example of this just so this really lands and so that it really makes sense. And by the way, if this is interesting to you and if this is resonant and if there's someone in your world who you think really needs to hear this, please hit the share button and share this so that this message of compassion and love and connectedness can reach more people because how amazing would it be 
to be in a world where we truly were more compassionate and patient and connected to each other and not run by frustration or run down by frustration as it happens sometimes. So there's two stories I just want to share with you that will help you see how this actually works. Um, the, uh, we just got a new grill, which is amazing. We got it for my birthday, and I'm obsessed with it. We cook on it all the time. And so usually I'm the one doing the cooking, and then Matt does like the cleanup and putting everything away and all of that. And so we made some dinner, and I noticed that the cover of the grill, this brand new grill that I'm obsessed with, it's like my new love, <laughs> the cover of the grill, he like didn't put it on all the way. And I looked outside and I was like, what the fuck? I was so mad. I was like, I made up all these stories about, oh my gosh, Cole, hi. <laughs> I made up all these stories about like how he did, like he, like he doesn't respect my things. He, thank you for saying I look beautiful. So appreciate that. I made up all these stories like, okay, he's being disrespectful of my things. He doesn't value me. He doesn't appreciate me. And I made up all these stories and I just was so frustrated in that moment. And then what ended up happening, I didn't say anything because I'm better trained than that. I'm, I know that when you come from compassion and patience and love, I know better than to react like that. And so even though I was feeling it, I didn't say anything. And I just kind of like, oh, Savannah, buddy, hi. I'm so happy to see you here. So happy to see you hopping on, right as I'm telling a story about your favorite, Matt. <laughs> And in the context of the energy of compassion and asking yourself and saying to yourself, there must be a good reason for this. So here it is. We're in the middle of dinner. Um, actually, we're finishing up from dinner. The cover from the grill is still hanging off the grill. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And um, what ended up happening was he went back to the grill and he pulls out a quesadilla, which is in the grill, that he was saving for himself and keeping warm. But he also wanted to honor the fact that I like the grill covered. So he covered it kind of halfway because he knew it was still hot. The grill, the, the quesadilla was in there and he wanted to keep it warm. But he also knows how important it is to me to cover the grill. So can you imagine if I had let the frustration take over and I hadn't stopped myself at step one to say there must be a good reason for this? Because guess what? There was. It was that he wasn't done eating. He wasn't done with the grill. At the same time, he was wanting to honor the fact that I like the grill covered. And he was just trying to make it a win-win using a solution that made sense for him. And can you imagine if I had gone in to just like diminish him and make him feel bad and make him wrong or yell at him or like whatever I would have done in the past versus going to step one, which is saying to yourself, there must be a good reason for this. So if you're experiencing frustration with somebody in your life, a family member, a significant other, a client, a friend, the first thing I want you to do, the first step of three is to say to yourself, there must be a good reason for this, for why they said that, for why they're doing this. Because what that does is gets you to start thinking of empathy and putting yourself in their shoes. And from there, you turn into, this is step two, you turn into a love generator. So sort of like that song, here's the love generation. Oh, 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 hearts and likes, if you know what I'm talking about. I love that song. It was my ringtone for a while. So you, you create love generation. And the way that you become a love generator is by doing this. And this is step two in letting go of frustration. Okay, so you're going to place your left hand on your heart, your right hand on your belly, and then here's what happens. You start to, you generate power from your belly, from your solar plexus, from your inner sunshine. So you generate light and power from your solar plexus and your inner sunshine. It travels up to your heart where it softens. It's, it's like you're experiencing yourself as a cup. And when, you, when your energy travels up to your heart, ooh, I have to sneeze, I'm so sniffly. I'm kind of in denial about being allergic to my dog. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. Okay. So the energy travels up to your heart. You fill up yourself as a cup of love and you fill up on the cup of love and then the energy 
pores back into your solar plexus. And so it becomes this generator. So if you know anything about Taurinian energy, the Taurus, as it's called, not Taurus like Leo Aries Taurus, but Taurus as in T-O-R-U-S, which is a type of, it's, it's the way that energy moves, and there's some work being done on sustainable energy creation in the environment um, where you can actually create free energy using Turinian energy. So you actually become a Taurus in yourself. So you move, the, you generate the energy from your power center, your solar plexus, your inner sunshine. It travels up to your heart, you fill up with love, and then it becomes the cycle of Turinian energy in your body. Yes, Cole, you are a love activator. Yes, you are. And so it becomes this cycle and you become a generator of love energy. And even as I'm saying this, it's like I was just thinking about frustrating moments before and then I started to think about being the love generator. So literally I will lay in bed at night and I did this even during the hurricane where I was wanting to generate love and like send it out to the hurricane to disperse it. And it worked, you know what I mean? Like so many people around the world were doing that and it did, like Irma minimized it, reduced in strength. And so, so what I do is I lay in bed and I do this every night and I place my left hand on my belly, my right hand on my heart, and I, I become a love generator. And so I generate the love and at that point I'm like smiling. I'm, there's no room for frustration in my energy. There's no room for anger, for resentment. There's no room for judgment. It's all just understanding, compassion, love, patience, peacefulness. Um, and it's a really nice energy to experience as well as to be around, you know, like Matt and I fall asleep really happy literally every night. I mean, it's just, it's just like our, our life. You know what I mean? We, we feel connected. We feel happy. I feel love and connection to my friends and my clients. And the reason is because I'm sourcing, I'm generating love energy using my body. By the way, this is healing energy. And so I go into, and I, ever since I started doing this, it's a practice I've started implementing uh, for a little while now. And it's like my, I, my dreams aren't as messed up as they used to be. I just, I, hearts and likes, if you can relate, if you have crazy dreams, I have crazy dreams sometimes. I won't even go into that right now. It's such a tangent. But my dreams have become much more pleasant since I started doing this because I've shifted the entire vibration of my energy and my heart and my thoughts by becoming a love generator. Um, Brandy, you look amazing. Thanks, girl. I appreciate that. Okay, so love generation. So it's generating this energy of love, Taurinian energy using your body, using your body wisdom. So just to recap, step one is cultivating compassion, saying to yourself, there must be a good reason for why they're doing, saying, being this. Step two is becoming a love generator, generating Taurinian love energy using that cycle. Step three is very subtle, and it's to receive your body wisdom at that point. So that's where at some point I will like receive a message to call somebody or someone, a soul, like a friend will come into my consciousness. And like I just posted on Facebook the other day, I was thinking of a girlfriend of mine and then she reached out and called me. I hadn't heard from her in months, right? So stuff like that happens. Um, I'll think about a client. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll connect something about Matt. Like, oh, I need to say this to Matt, and you know, I'll like acknowledge him about something, or just like assert something, or create space for something, or have my own little mini breakthrough about something, and share it or not. Sometimes I don't. I just keep it to myself and just keep it within. Sometimes, sometimes I'll share. Sometimes, whatever. You receive the wisdom. But it's very subtle. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you to do exactly like a certain formula because this is where it becomes more subtle and about trusting yourself and the universe and the wisdom that you're receiving. So um, like in my Power of Body Wisdom workshop this past Saturday, there I would have the students move and then stop and then place their feet on the ground, place their hands on their heart and receive. And they all received something different. You know, for one person it was, Oh, I need to experience more fun. Actually, that was the, the wisdom for a lot of people. I need to experience more fun. The wisdom for someone else was, wow, it's really time to like show myself and stop hiding and like show the more authentic, like real raw version of myself and my body. You know, for another person, right, it was, um, 
oh, the roadmap of what my next step is is available to me at all times. But the wisdom isn't gonna come to you if you don't create space to receive it. And it's not gonna come to you, like high level wisdom isn't gonna come to you if you're not in alignment with the energy and the vibration of love. So in recap, and, and sort of like recap what everything I've said so far, the first thing is to put to open yourself to empathy, right? To not be so righteous, being willing to be wrong, to be compassionate to the other person in their situation. The second thing is to become a love generator, to move that love energy through your solar plexus and your heart chakra until it fills you up and you're like, I'm sparkling, even if you just had the worst day ever, right? And that fills you up and heals you and allows you to be that for other people. And then the third thing is to receive wisdom, to receive the guidance, the wisdom, whatever is um, the universe wants to deliver to you so that you can just be a vessel of service for whatever is happening in that situation with that other person. And I promise you that when you come to a situation from that energy, as opposed to whatever frustration energy you were in before that, because at that point, Point, you will not experience frustration like at that point frustration just it won't be in your consciousness it can't it doesn't coexist with love fear does not it's mutually exclusive it does not coexist with love and so when you're filled up and you've generated all that love, it just excludes any kind of like fear, doubt, scarcity, any of that. And then when you approach that person, that situation from that energy, it's like the craziest miracles happen, that the craziest things start to open up for you, you know, and like you, you don't even have to do anything. You don't even have to, to tactically try to figure things out or say the right thing because the universe comes in and does half the work for you or most of the work for you. And then that person might come to you and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I was wrong. Or, um, you know, can we talk about this? Or, right, like just energies change. Things land for that other person because they experience you in a different energy. They experience you as not making them wrong. They experience you as not being judgmental anymore. They experience you as open and willing. And it's like, you don't even have to say anything. Like energetically, you could be halfway across the world and that person can feel it, even if they don't realize it. And they'll just have that little thought, that seed gets planted by the universe. And they, the universe says, the whisper says, call Julie. Or like reach out to Diane or whatever it is. And then of course that person has choice. And if they're tuned in, if they're aligned, which by the way, this is why it's my mission to support a world where every person's in alignment with their dharma. Because imagine if we lived in a world like that where people were that tuned in with their wisdom and intuition. <laughs> cool. The whisper, indeed. Then they act on it and now you find yourself in symbiosis and harmony and working it out from a place of empathy, mutual empathy, compassion, and love rather than frustration. So I hope this Dharma Talk Tuesday made a difference for you, hearts and likes if it did. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, I'd love to hear from you and answer them for you here. If you're listening to this or rather watching this on the replay, I always come back and check and um, you provide feedback and thoughts on the replay. Um, as, as it gets watched, Diane says, harmony is awesome. Isn't it just the best thing ever? Like, uh, harmony is heaven. Heaven is harmony. I just, it feels good to live in a space of harmony, which doesn't come from controlling or trying to finagle or trying to just do things perfectly, exactly the right way. Harmony truly comes from trusting, surrendering, doing your part, you know, working hard as far as like keeping yourself in alignment with the three pillars, which I've talked about on other Dharma talks, but doing your part and then allowing the universe to also come in and support you and then noticing when you're actually being supported as opposed to fighting it. And that's a whole other Dharma Talk Tuesday, so I don't need to go on that tangent right now. Maybe that'll be the upcoming one. Actually, next week, um, I do have a special guest on. Um, 
we I will be at the Zone event in Palm Springs, which I've mentioned on previous Dharma Talks, which I'm super excited about. It's going to be so fun. I'm actually speaking on stage, which is going to be such a cool opportunity and so much fun. I'm going to be telling a story that I've never actually told before. I was rehearsing it today, and I literally, like, oh, I was, like, getting choked up because it's such a vulnerable story. So maybe I'll give you a little sample of it on a, an upcoming Dharma Talk if you're not going to the Zone. Although I'm, I'm looking at the thread and a lot of you are, which is cool. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because I'm actually going to be interviewing and speaking with um, the hydration ambassador there, the sponsor of hydration there, which is Ash Gandahari of Hyburst. And he's going to be telling you all about the Hyburst mission, what it means to create and be an entrepreneur and be on purpose and create a product um, despite the challenges, despite the obstacles, despite the fears, and to still go for it anyway and to have that courage and the audacity to make a true, real difference in the world. So that's what next Dharma Talk Tuesday is all about. And I'd love to see you there. We are here every week, 4 o'clock Pacific, Dharma Talk Tuesday with me, Julie Surratt, founder of the Dharma Circle, head coach of Maya, and I look forward to seeing you next week for Dharma Talk Tuesday. Have an awesome week until then. Bye!